In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to make incredible speed ramps that look like this. Okay, so jumping right in, the first thing I'm actually going to do is pull up the project that I pulled that footage from. And I'm going to show you here what it looks like after it's already been done inside of the window preview. And so if I come here to this click right here, this clip here, and I click on uh, this little symbol right here, which is like the ramping, then I just need to select read time speed. And you can see that I have created these keyframes and I have smoothed them out so that they look like that. Now, uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to start from scratch. So this clip was recorded at 60 frames per second, and I've just interpolated it down to uh, regular speed. Uh, so you can see here that I'll just play it back at times three speed so you can see what it is. I just kind of walk through the opening of this home, just like I'm doing here. And uh, I had in my head, I had shot the video to be able to speed ramp it later. I kind of walk up to the one spot, pause, walk up to the next spot and pause, and then I rotate around. What we're going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to start at the position that I want to start at inside the clip, right click on this, and I'm going to go to retime curve, not retype controls, because retime controls, if I click on that, that gives me this percentage here. Um, but then that just allows me to click and drag it to speed it up or slow it down like that, which um, is, is great for adjusting the speed of an entire clip, but not for keyframing the uh, speed ramping throughout the clip. So re right click, click on retime curve. And for whatever reason, by default, DaVinci Resolve doesn't actually default to, in my opinion, what is the easiest way to do this. So you're going to click on the arrow and instead of selecting retime frame, you're going to deselect that and select retime speed. This to me just uh, makes more sense uh, from a visual standpoint, um, right? It just makes more sense to have it to where when it goes up, it goes faster. And then when it comes back down, it goes slower. So if you know how to use the retime frame, comment down below and let me know, because I'd love to hear from you. Going back into this, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to move to the point where I want it to pause. And so probably about right here, I'm going to hold alt on my keyboard and add a keyframe. And then I'm going to say pause for just a second here and then I want to speed back up again once it starts to uh, turn. So add another keyframe there and then I want to speed up and then slow down right about here once I kind of show off the living room. Slow down just like that and then I want it to speed up again right about here because I want it to turn and then show off the kitchen. So now that I have all of my keyframes Let's go ahead and adjust the speed. And this is this is the part that um, I actually didn't know about until just recently that's super, super helpful. So when you're keyframing, so I want it to be fast here. So I'm going to increase the speed. But if I increase it all the way to 300, it's pretty fast, but not very, especially because I've already interpolated my clip to be 60% uh, slower than its original, uh, it basically, at, at 40% it's playback speed because it was shot at 60 frames per second, but I wanted it at 24. So I'm already slowing it down a bunch. What you need to do is if you move your mouse right here, you'll notice that you see this percentage. And if you hover over it, you get kind of a side by side arrow. And what you can do here is you can actually limit or increase the maximum amount of speed to be able to speed ramp. And I didn't know this. Uh, I wish I'd known this a lot sooner because I've always thought speed ramps and resolve just just looked not as good because you couldn't go very fast. But you can just increase the maximum speed ramping uh, roof or ceiling, if you will. So I'm going to increase that to, I don't know, something ridiculous, like 3000 um, percent. That way, when I actually do this, now we get a very fast speed ramp here. So you can see here, whoosh, it kind of whooshes in just like that slows down right there and this is too slow but that's okay we'll fix that here in a second uh, bring this up to another ridiculous amount i'm going to move this over so that it's not as not as long so speed ramps to there speed ramps to there and i'm actually gonna have it go even a little further like that so speed ramps to there even a little further and then 
and then we want it to speed ramp from there. So we're going to increase the speed of that one and speed ramp to there. Just like that. So, as you can see here, speed ramp to there. And that's even still almost a little bit too long, so I'm going to shorten it by just clicking and dragging the, the beginning of this speed ramp over. Speed ramp to there, speed ramp to there. May okay, maybe it was actually okay there. Let's decrease the speed just a bit. And you can see that it's automatically adjusting the length of the clip according to the speed ramp. So you can just um, adjust it, and this is even a great way to adjust it to the, the beat of your music if you want to as well. But I'm just doing it without music for the sake of uh, the tutorial. Speed ramp to there, speed ramp to there. That's going to be too long, so I'm going to reduce that again. And speed ramp to there. Cool. So we are already at a good spot, in my opinion. Now we've got that, but they're a bit stiff, for lack of a better term, or they kind of instantly speed up and instantly slow down. So we want to add that really nice S curve. All we have to do is select the point and then click on this, which adds more of like a vizier or S curve. And so we'll just do that to all of them. So you can see here, slows down, speeds up, slows down, and then speeds up and slows down. And so that's already looking much better, but we can make it look even better. So if you select this right here, you can see here that we actually have like two handles that kind of pop out. We're gonna grab the one on the right and drag it over like this. So this first one, is going to slow down quite nicely. And you can only do it so much. So you see if I overextend this first one and it cuts into the second speed, the second half of the same speed ramp. Um, so depending on which part you want to be smoother, if you want it to be smoother on the acceleration versus the deceleration, then that's your decision to make. Uh, but I just like to kind of round it off so it's even on both sides. So it's just super smooth on both. So come right here like that like that, and like that. So uh, that's already looking really, really nice, but to kind of put the uh, cherry on top, the icing on the cake, if you will. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, some motion blur. Go into your effects, and you're gonna go into open effects. And depending on the type of movement uh, that you're seeing is going to depend on the type of motion blur that or the type of blur that you're going to use because the speed ramping has most mostly a forward motion I'm going to use the zoom blur so click and drag add that to my clip come into my effects and to start off we're going to zero it out like that so that it's not blurring it at all and then we're going to go to the beginning of the frame and we're going to add a keyframe and we'll blur it the amount we think will look good don't want to go too much overboard and to help us give us kind of a cheat sheet i'm going to open up our speed ramping again so now i can say okay we're about to the end of the speed ramp right here so i'm going to keyframe the most the the zoom blur to be zero right there so you can see that it blurs it and then it kind of slows down and stops right there now this is more of a sideways motion rather than a zooming or forward motion so for it, I'm actually going to use a directional blur. So click and drag the directional blur onto here. Uh, same thing. Well, first of all, let's add, make our blur angle 90, or excuse me, 180 degrees. Uh, so it's horizontal, because in this we're moving only horizontally. I didn't move up and down. Make the blur strength zero. And we're going to come right here, and we're going to keyframe it. And then from here to here, we want it to probably stay zero until we really start to give it some motion here. So like probably right here. So we'll add another keyframe for blur strength zero. But then right here at the peak, we're going to increase the blur to what we think looks good until right about there when there's not as much motion like that. And then we're going to keyframe it again, but from right here to here is when we're going to bring it almost all the way back down until right here when we want to be back to zero. So you can see here, that actually looks really good, really nice. Keyframe, so we have a keyframe for zero there. And then from here, we want to add another keyframe of zero. But then from here to here, which is kind of our peak blur, it was a very fast pan. 
So we want it to be very blurry until right about here when it keyframes there and then back to pretty much zero. Well, not quite zero. Let's do use the arrow to go back to that keyframe. Maybe like that. Increase and then decrease back to zero here. And you can see there that that gives it that really nice motion blur. Just like that. Even though it takes a just a little longer to keyframe it manually, I can dial it in exactly how I want it. I can even over exaggerate it if I kind of want that that look where I can uh, vice versa make it more subtle. And then the program's not deciding for me what the motion blur looks like. Another way that we can add motion blur that works pretty well, but I don't think looks quite as good as the uh, first method that I showed you, and that is to pre-render the clip once you've finished you know, all your color grading and everything, and then this is the last thing you do to it. Pre-render your clip and then add uh, kind of the automatic motion blur inside of DaVinci Resolve. This is a feature, of course, that is in the DaVinci Resolve Studio Edition, and I do enjoy using it, but it needs to be used sparingly, which you'll see here in a moment why. So I'm going to right-click and click Render in Place. I'm going to just select MP4, H.264, and then all of the auto settings here. I'm going to render it, and I can render it inside of the actual project because uh, it's rendering the clip and then grabbing it from there to put inside of here. So you'd want to uh, essentially put it inside of your project settings. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to put it in my videos folder and call it good. So it'll take a second to render. Once it is done, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come into my color settings and I'm literally just going to turn on motion blur and I'm just going to turn it up to what I think looks pretty good, which is right about here. And maybe do a better estimation and then do a larger blur radius. And you can see here what that's actually doing. It's DaVinci Resolve is actually estimating the motion blur inside using kind of an optical flow method. And it looks pretty good, but you can see here that if I scrub through frame by frame, you start to get kind of some minor anomalies. So you can see here what it's doing with light fixture here in the side. It's kind of more so duplicating it or like right here where it kind of has some really weird warpiness to it. That's just a result of the type of estimation motion blur that it is. Um, and sometimes you can fix that by, you know, dialing in your settings to see what looks the best, but that's just the nature of the way that it's going to be. Um, and so that's why I don't typically like to use this method because it's just a little more difficult. It is faster because all you have to do is, uh, render your clip and then uh, just put it out and it just kind of works. So in a pinch, it's a lot faster and it works in great in some situations much better than others. So there you have it. That is today's video in regards to creating speed ramps and then of course adding motion blur to those speed ramps. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have more tutorials on the way as I myself am also exploring DaVinci Resolve and learning about its incredible features. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the more, any more of those. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.